In this video, we're going to see capacitor filter in power supplies, which is right after the rectifier stage. But especially, we're going to see capacitance filter with half wave rectifier. The block diagram is shown here, where right after the rectifier, we have the filter, where we have shown the capacitance filter. As capacitor is open circuit for DC, we have connected it in parallel to the load resistor. When the DC component is coming, it goes directly to the load resistor. So let me show that here. Let's say the output of the rectifier has a current. Let's say that is both AC plus DC. Now, obviously, for DC, capacitor is an open circuit. So hence, the DC current would flow through the load resistor because the capacitor is open circuit. Of course, in this case, this capacitor and resistor are like current divider network. Now, when it comes to AC, most of the AC would flow through the capacitor, assuming that the reactance offered by the capacitor is very, very small compared to the load resistor. In that case, most of the AC would go through the capacitor. So we have to make sure that the reactance offered by capacitance is far less compared to the load resistance. So let me show that the AC flows through the capacitor and DC flows through the load resistor. Whereas in the previous video where we have seen the inductor filter, it was connected in series to load resistor because it is a short circuit for DC so that it allows the DC directly to go through the load resistor. Whereas when it comes to AC, most of the AC voltage gets dropped across the inductor in the previous section. So let me put the half wave rectifier in place of the rectifier block here. Let me make the points here. Capacitor and the load resistor form current divider. And number two, for DC, capacitor is open circuit. Hence, all DC flows through the load resistor RL. Now coming to AC, flows almost through capacitor and it is negligible or none through the load resistor. But of course, this is possible only with the assumption that we have made that is reactance offered by the capacitance is far less compared to the load resistance. Now, let us look at the input waveform to the rectifier, which is at the output of the secondary winding. So I've taken the input waveform here where this is the peak value Vm. And on the negative side, it is given here, that is minus Vm. Now to start with, let me assume that the capacitor is completely discharged or let's say the capacitor has no charge. So capacitor holds no charge to start with. Now let's say we are starting at T is equal to zero. Now as the input is positive and the voltage across the capacitor is zero, the diode D1 will be forward biased. When diode is forward biased, it will be like a short circuit. So let me draw the diagram of it starting from the secondary winding and forward. Now as time progresses, as the diode is forward biased, the current would be flowing and hence the voltage across the capacitor should be following whatever is at the input side which is at the output of the secondary winding. Hence, the capacitor will get charged till a point where it reaches the peak value. There is still this point. Let's say this is T1. From T is equal to 0 till T is equal to T1, where input voltage reaches Vm, the capacitor will keep following the voltage at the output of the secondary winding by getting charged. So this is the first case where time is in between 0 and T1. Now when the input reaches peak beyond which the capacitor voltage would remain Vm because as the input voltage keeps decreasing below Vm now the N side of the diode is fixed at Vm and at the P side of the diode is reducing which is at the output of the secondary winding. Hence the diode would be reverse biased. Hence the diode would be like open circuit. So let me draw that circuit here. So in the second case, let's see, starting from T1, let's find out where it goes still. 
Now as the diode is open circuit, there won't be any current supplied from the secondary winding. But as capacitor is charged to Vm from the first condition, now the capacitor will discharge through the load resistor. Hence, the voltage across the capacitor would keep decreasing. But of course here, let me represent first, this is time period of the waveform. Now we're going to assume that RLC is very very greater than the time period of the input waveform. So this being the assumption, the discharge rate would be very very small. Because we know that when a capacitor is discharging, the voltage would follow because the initial voltage is Vm. We can write Vm times e power minus of T over Rc, where R is RL in fact here. So when RLC is very very greater than capital T, the discharge rate would be very slow. So the discharge rate, I am showing here that the output voltage waveform would be like this. So as it keeps decreasing, the red one is the output voltage waveform and the green one is the input voltage waveform. There is a point at which output voltage would become equal to input voltage at which point the voltage across the diode would be exactly zero. Now beyond this point, the input voltage is higher than the output voltage. So which means that the diode would become forward biased now. So let me draw that circuit here. That will be the third case. So let me take this point to be T2. So the second case is in between T1 and T2. Now the third case would look very similar to the first case because the diode is forward biased. In this case there would be current flowing. Now the capacitor would follow the input voltage. So hence the output voltage would be like this till it reaches the peak point. Let's say that is T3. So we can say that the third case is the time is in between T2 and T3. The only difference between the first one and the second one is first one is the initial condition starting point where we see the transient and afterwards the waveform would proceed by going through the second phase and the third phase. So let me just show it here that the Vm beyond this point the capacitor would discharge through the resistor and it comes into the second case where the capacitor would get charged till the peak value and then it would start discharging. And this point between T1 and T3, this time difference is also time period. So this time period is divided into two segments that is T1 to T2 that is discharging phase whereas T2 to T3 is charging phase. Now let's put that T discharge plus T charge is equal to the time period with the assumption that RLC is very very greater than the time period then we can say that T discharge is approximately equal to the time period itself because the charging time that period is very very small because of this assumption that RLC is very very greater than capital T the time period. Now having said that let's figure out what is the ripple factor in this case. So for that we are going to make some points here that the minimum value that we hit here would be Vm minus Vr. So let me take that this voltage difference is Vr the ripple peak to peak voltage. So let me write this down here Vr is peak to peak ripple voltage. But if you want to know what is the peak ripple voltage that will be Vr by 2. That's exactly the case. So if you look at even the input waveform, we write it as Vm sin omega t. But if you see peak to peak, the difference is 2 Vm. But the peak value is Vm. Hence, the same way here, if the peak to peak value is Vr for ripple output voltage, then we can say Vr by 2 is the peak ripple voltage. Now in the discharge phase, the equation would be Vm times e power minus T over RLC that we have seen here. Now this voltage will be equal to Vm minus Vr K 
given we take this value at t is equal to capital T because we have already assumed that the discharge time is approximately equal to the time period itself. So hence we can make this assumption and this can be written as Vm times C power minus of capital T over RLC is equal to Vm minus Vr as RLC is very very greater than T we can rewrite this expression as Vm times 1 minus capital T over RLC which is equal to Vm minus Vr we can still reduce this 1 minus T over RLC is equal to 1 minus Vr over Vm. So we can write Vr is equal to Vm times T over RLC. So we can write this in terms of the input frequency that is Vm over F 1 over T is F hence I am writing F here times RLC. So F is the input frequency. So we have found the relationship between the peak to peak ripple voltage in fact peak to peak output ripple voltage in terms of the peak input voltage. This is valid under the assumption that RLC is very very greater than T hence we came to a conclusion that discharge time is approximately equal to the total time period. I have represented the output voltage waveform here where this difference was the ripple peak to peak voltage. Now as we have assumed that RLC is very very greater than capital T we can say that VR value will be very very small. When VR value is very very small which means we can take Vm by RL to be simply IDC. So let me write that here IDC over F times C. Now we can take the output waveform has some AC component and some DC component. So if we take DC component to be somewhere then we have a triangular waveform on top of it. So for a triangular waveform the ripple factor for a triangular waveform the RMS value is we can say that V dash RMS for a triangular waveform is peak value of the triangular waveform divided by square root 3. We know the peak value of this ripple output waveform it is Vr by 2. We can write this equal to Vr by 2 square root 3. Now the output DC value Vdc can be written equal to IDC times RL and we have seen Vr value is given here. So let's substitute that one here that is IDC over 2 square root 3 F times C. So ripple factor is given by V dash RMS over VDC which is equal to IDC over 2 square root 3 FC over IDC times RL. So the ripple factor is as IDC gets cancelled. 1 over 2 square root 3 FCRL. So the ripple factor for a half wave rectifier with capacitor filter at its output is 1 over 2 square root 3 FCRL. Capacitor filter should be used when RL is large or load current is small. Whereas an inductor we have seen it reverse that inductor filter should be used when RL is small and load current is large whereas in capacitor filter it is different. If you like the video please give a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet please do subscribe and thank you for watching.